What's up guys? We're back with another replay analysis of Oso Mako of Botswana again. I have learned it is not a coastal city. I guessed. I failed. But anyway, we're going into this replay. He's he says he's plateaued around all-star in twos and threes. Uh you might uh look recognize some of the people he is facing. He's actually facing low five carpet and Chad, uh the infamous Chad that James Bot actually hates. But anyway, you can get this replay uh, uh, analyzed, or like you can get a replay analyzed by going to patreon.com slash give zero zero. And um, yeah, just check out the tier. It's usually full, but just keep checking throughout the month and uh, try and get in there. And on that, I'm just like jumbled. I'm jumbled. Let's go to the replay. Let's start over. Start off with the face off. Face offs are important in threes, not as much compared to twos or ones, but. Still important. You generally want to win it to, to your left, and uh, he's facing findable carpet, and you know, he's a challenger elite at best. So, wins the face off pretty easily going to the left to both of his teammates, which is a good start. Here he's, he's just playing that third man. He's going to have to like, respect the players a bit in this game, at least low five. Um, and a little bit Chad, probably not carpet. But uh, let's see how this goes. So, this ball hit to him. He tries for the double pop. Um, clear the problem is he just goes a little bit on a weird angle at it so he can't get it too high but he, he does get it high enough that it actually forces carpet to go in the air see this is much better than throwing it like at the ground like if you throw it in the air it forces the other team to go in the air and most people are not as comfortable in the air as on the ground i don't think i've seen anyone that's actually more comfortable in the air than on the ground but um carpet has a bad clear and he's able to tip it back in for another play attempt possibly his team is rotating back so this little chip could have turned into a really good pass. It almost did. Now he's blindly going for the boost, which is fine. Just go for the boost. He understands that the play is going to be in that corner. Great clear from, from low five. Crazy Ace is not really in, in a position. Good backup, though, here. Here again, he, he just takes a little bit of an uh, awkward angle on this clear. Doesn't read the bounce perfectly. So he has to turn into it, use a lot more boost that way. But again, he keeps it in the air. So then Carpet doesn't get as quality of a shot as he wants. Right there, because it's in the air, Carpet has to shoot it while in the air. His goalies can make the save. And they almost get the clear. Uh, this is an awkward 50-50 for his teammate. Uh, J squared. Uh, it just goes perfectly sideways, which is really just unfortunate. He's rotating back because of the 50-50, waiting for this ball. And the ball just goes to Chad before him. There's not much he can do here. It's a good shot. I understand why he he's coming out to maybe block an angle or maybe get the first touch. It's... Quite understandable, but it uh, doesn't really work out. Chad with a nice shot. Gets it over Crazy Ace as well. Now, this is just awkward. Crazy Ace should have been able to make this play. Like, I see what he's trying to do here. Cheating up on the right. This is the same thing I do. Makes perfect sense on the face-off. The face-off just gets lost pretty badly to his own corner. Crazy Ace actually jumped at first, so that's what threw this whole play off. And uh, they try and get past the middle. Good patience there. Let Crazy Ace... Crazy Ace go up. Don't send two if you don't have to. And then uh, just get ready for that rebound, which worked out. Um, let's go back to the rebound itself, though. So Crazy goes. He's trying to beat Low 5, which he kind of does. It was... Like, Low 5 is cheating up pretty far here. He probably could have just powered this out a little bit more to uh, down the field, maybe? Uh, off the wall? Uh, generally, like, you want to keep these close when the other guy's hanging about midfield. And then here, he actually ball chases the ball a little bit too much off this uh, ricochet. Once you throw it off the wall, actually, no, um, it's uh, just his flip. His flip leads him into that area with the momentum he had. So not much he, he can do there. Uh, uh, they keep control of the ball on the other side. It happens. You want to throw those balls up, generally, like up the wall. Um, if you're going to go, let's go all the way back here to this play. Th uh, so this ball, you want to keep on the ground, if anything, so then you can follow it up next. But since it bounces off the wall, it bounces back into the middle. It will generally go to the other team when you're trying for clears that way. So that's why when you're clearing, you generally want to throw it up the wall. So then you could follow it and either have a f like a 50-50 up the wall or let the other team... To, or just get like a monster clear off the wall. Here's a pass from low five. It's not like a dangerous pass. He probably could have just left this ball go over him. Because that's a really, really poor hit. Um, I'm surprised he goes up this late. Let's see. All right, so right here, it's hard to see, but he actually hits the gas a little bit too quickly. 
Uh, this kind of screws up the entire play. All right, so let's go to 25% here. Just get it to unload five hits the ball. So he's breaking here. He is fully braked, and now he's starting to hit the gas. He breaks again, then hits the gas. He's just trying to like, line himself up. But right here, he hit the brake, and then he just keeps moving forward a bit. Then hits the brake. It was just a little bit too late. That extra moving forward probably hurt him here. It just makes you start off on a bad angle on an aerial. And then he kind of gives up halfway through, it looks like. It's hard to tell what happens here. Yeah, he gives up. Maybe he, he just had no boost left. That's probably what it was. Uh, generally, though, here, like, you can see both Findable and Chad, both on the left side. Chad, maybe, it, like, if you boost the whole way, can reach it, but I doubt it. Like, these are the type of balls that you might be able to just leave and throw back into the other corner. Um, when you think that you're not going to have a great hit. You don't always have to make a hit when the ball is flying over your goal. Um, if the other team is not ready for the pass, just let it go to the other corner and then reset. Alright, let's talk about this clear right here. So these are the big wall clears that are really good. Uh, for That a lot of pros do. They bring the ball up their own wall. You see how low fire brings that up. It baits in one guy because he's going to watch for the bad hit. And then he just air dribbles it out. Pretty simply there. Um, and then let's go to low five actually. So he, he just air dribbles it out. Beats one. Let's see if he beats anyone else. I couldn't really tell from the other angles. Throws up his own wall. Just does like a little pop off. Like hits the bottom of the ball. So then it... It just pops out right in front of him. Beats one there because uh, Oso went for the first touch. He didn't realize that it was an air dribble. And J squared's a little bit too close as well. He was cheating for the other side of the field, which is pretty smart to cheat for the corner. But that play by bringing it back into your own corner just beat two of them, and now they're on a fast break. Uh, so very good play there from Mr. Low 5. So Osu's trying to rotate back. His teammate does a good challenge in the air, but again, it's carpet, so it's pretty bad anyway. Bad shot, anyway. Um, no, he, he's just waiting this out. Waiting out for J-squared. J-squared with a little bit of a chipper. A little bit of an awkward play here. See, right here, these are the plays where... Alright, so this is actually a really bad play by Carpet. So I get to talk about him. Um, so, when someone hits the ball into your own corner... You don't want to, like, ball chase it all the way to the corner. Because then you can't make a play on it. One reason why you would ball chase it to the corner is you want to hit it before it hits the wall. So then you can take it up the wall, do your own dribble. But if you can't reach it in time, then you're screwed because you can't really react to it in time. So right here, he flips. I think he's just mostly going for the boost. I think it was just a miscommunication. Um, looks like he's going for the boost. And then um, it kind of screws up low five. Because he thought Carpet was going for the ball. That's just something that has to be called out. So if that ever happens to you where you're going for boost and you're with the team, make sure you call it out. Obviously, if Carpet's playing with low five and Chad, they're probably not going to be communicating too much. They're probably going to be doing other random shit. So, But that's the case just in case. Um, communication is key, basically. Let the goalie know that you're not actually going for the ball and going for boost. It's always a big deal. Good chip, though, to get it around low five. Nice play here. He waits to see what low five's first touch is, which is actually really, really smart. Like, this is what you want to do when you don't have ball control, but you want a challenge. Wait to their first touch. See where they're hitting it, and then make your challenge. Because usually their first touch will be a little bit too far away. So here, low five just taps it a little too far away. And Osu makes the challenge very well done. And then his teammate tries to follow it up. Let's go with, uh... Oh, oh I guessed right. Okay. So he goes up. He's trying to just bank it off the wall. Trying to get it back out to Osu. But it's just it's just not close enough. Which is fine. Went for the attempt. Right here, though, you should not really be jumping. This happened earlier, too, where he jumped off Low Five's uh, aerial. Uh, off the wall. He Like, I understand trying to react quickly. Maybe he just didn't see Low Five in time, which is probably the case. Uh, so he jumps and he's like, oh, crap. Low Five's there. Ends a misplay. At least he only used one jump and not did his old flip. Because if he does his old flip... Then he's out of the play for a really long time. Now he gets back on the rotation. J squared taking this in. Herbert with a good save. Don't tell him I said that. But uh, this is a good play by uh, Osu. He's starting to move up. Maybe he could have cheated up a bit more. But I guess Crazy Ace was there. I thought Crazy Ace was getting boost. So that's my fault. Good bumps. This is always a good play here. So he gets screwed up by these like tiny little hits. Which happens. 
Like, he's coming in to help out Crazy Ace, and the, like, 50 just goes wrong. But his other play here is to just smack around lo-fi for a bit, which is everyone's favorite nightly activity is just smack around lo-fi. So he just takes him out, doesn't let him get control of the ball for a little while, bumping him away. Uh, let's Crazy Ace get ball control, and they keep it in this side of the field for now. Uh, but that's just a really smart play when you don't have a chance at the ball sometimes. Just go take out the car, which is perfectly fine. It makes their whole play off because findable uh, carpet was waiting for low five sit there, but then he got bumped out. So it turned two players like away from the play right away. All right, we'll go back here. Uh, this one, he tries to challenge. He, he probably doesn't think Chad's actually going to hit that wall hit, but Chad does. Um, it's understandable. Like, if you're the first guy, it's not a huge deal. Like, you're going to have a goalie anyway. So when you have a goalie like that, like here he knows that someone's in net. It's not a bad idea to just, to just go up and try and block at least some angles or at least put the pressure on the shooter. Um, because generally, you don't really want two people in that. Maybe, like, if you coordinate to block the left side and the right side, it might help, but generally it won't. Um, then here, they kind of just have a meeting in the net, waiting for a low five shot. He just hesitates a bit here. Um, instead of doing the front flip, he went for the side flip. I don't know if it would have mattered. It's a little bit lucky on their part that Lofi hit the post and it bounced out into the mid, but they get the goal. It was hard to get the quick rotations here, but this play all started with the Chad hit. And Crazy Ace tries to make the save, just doesn't do a great job with it. J Squared's got to touch that ball though. Uh, J Squared has to throw that into your own corner. Like I understand he's he might have scored it, but you got to try and tap those into your own corner. Waste some time because you know that one person challenged. The other one made the save, but he just landed. So he's that third man that needs to make a touch on that ball. It just didn't happen there. That's why it's a team game. Like, all three on defense have to do something. Ooh, and then J-squared with the miss here. Just having a bad set of plays in a row. This is a good wall hit. Bring it up the field. Carpet tried to challenge a little too far. And then low five was just getting back. Can't make the play yet. Um, he's actually lined up really well for another shot here. He's lined up right by the ball. He tr Oh, he just goes a little bit too far to the right just mistimes it a bit he has to go fast because he knows low five is coming um just a little bit too far uh those you just got to put in but it happens and that's why it's good to just even like position near a ball like low five being that close made j square have to rush it a bit and that's why they missed that ball um so it's always good to do this is a great pass whenever like you can hit those curves in the corner uh, th uh, it's fantastic. Right here, it makes Chad and Findable Carpet both go up on defense. That's two people out of the play, two people with a lot less boost. This is another fantastic pass. That was a beauty. So this play right here, there's really no play. Like, if he lets that land, then low five has the ball. So he pops it up over low five, and the best part is the ball is going back towards the midfield softly and is about to bounce which is like the perfect uh, scenario for your teammates that are waiting midfield for a really high quality shot and j squared takes it pretty good shot actually takes it up so he doesn't wait for the bounce he he just goes to the aerial which is perfectly fine goes to the top right corner great shot a low five being the god that he is makes the save let's go back here i see low five here he wants to start um a dribble as soon as he sees that touch so he knows he has to go back to net so, he's like, all right, this is going to be a shot. He knows uh, J-Squared has a shot. He actually turns a little bit towards it, maybe thinking about a challenge in case J-Squared goes for the bounce shot. But J-Squared goes for the air. As soon as he sees that, he turns around, goes sideways to the net, which is the easiest way to save a shot. Um, uh, like, especially when J-Squared's shot was not hard. Like, if it's more of, like, a chip, then just going sideways is a very easy save. Makes it, throws it around the corner for Chad, too, which is actually a really good spot for supportive defensive clears with chad chad does a great job with the clear and then let's go back to oso trying to make some plays here so he rotates through just waiting on that that was actually a weird 50 50 and i don't blame him for trying to cheat up a bit because it looked like it was gonna be different uh so so he has to back up here the only problem is chad is there chad is ready for this dunk usually when someone is ready for the dunk you want to get on top of the ball and hit it low he uh, still puts it high like tries to go for that wrist and chad just like destroys him on this dunk and then that just keeps wall pressure but j squared gets back in time and beats around two of them but it's just hard trying to get this ball out oh there we go they got it out but couldn't finish it off j squared having a little bit of a rough game 
Good shots. Here comes a little five again. A little uh, aerial dribble. This is the perfect way to stop an aerial dribble. Don't go up in the air for it. It's pointless. Just wait for him to finish it, if you can. Like, if no teammates are coming up for it. So it's actually a really good idea to come down. Just wait for it. Wait till he, he hits the ball right into you. And it will win the 50-50 most of the time. Here, both guys miss. See, Chad here, he brings the ball to the wall so he can make his own monster clear. He just kind of whiffs on it. Crazy Ace tries to go for the dunk. And obviously misses because uh, a Chad missed. A J squad, uh, a J squared had a pretty decent shot here. Just puts it a little wide and a little low. Good challenge by Osu though. Uh, not allowing low five to start his dribble, and this should be a goal. Beautiful job here. So he goes up, reads the angle correctly. Like he's waiting around. He has full boost, so he knows. Like if J squared wins this, he's going, and he has that third man in rotation. Like around midfield, so he's perfectly fine going for this. There's no one in net, so you go for this. No matter what, you go for this. Even if you miss, you have to go. He goes up. He changes uh, uh, his direction really quickly towards the end here to line it up just perfectly. And then he puts the back side of his car, or the top side of his car, I should say, on the ball, which actually makes the ball hit harder, so it'll go faster in the net, just in case, like, Chad makes a miracle save. Like, if... Um, if he hits that uh, with his wheels, it might drop down in front of the net and might take an extra bounce, and Chad might be able to make the save, so it's a good idea to air roll to hit it with the back of his car. Or top of his car, I should say. And good goal there. Good play. Good shot. Good game. Let's continue here. Wins the faceoff. Tries to get somewhat of a shot, but this actually kind of works. But All right, so here he, he has no boost. I think he was trying for a shot here. Uh, just barely doesn't get it. Um, there's really no point for him to challenge this ball because he has no boost left. So this is actually a really good play to, to just go take their boost. That's one less boost for them. Hopefully his teammate wins that challenge, but didn't. A good play here. Just throw it back in their side. Like, it's a little bit of, um, like a surprise hit. Oh my god, J-Squirt's having a rough game. Um, so this hit is actually really good. Because low five thinks that he's going back. But he waits for that play. Just throws it back. This screws up low five like crazy. We'll show low fives point of view real quick for this one. Uh, and this is why you always want to do like these l weird mini touches whenever you can. When people don't think that you're actually going to make a play in the ball. It's actually a really good idea. Here he, he comes around. He's expecting to charge right after that hit. And uh, Osu actually throws it back um, instead of just sideways, which is the standard hit. Makes low five be just a little bit uh, out of position. And uh, uh, Osu makes the play. Now, here's a J Squared's point of view. He's waiting around. He's waiting for this challenge. He sees the win. He just charges too quick. That's all really happened there. He thought someone would be coming over, which is, like, in a way, you're respecting your opponents because you're like, all right, they're probably going to be there in time that they've been doing pretty good job rotations. But here, you see Chad's out of play. Low Five's out of play. Carpet is going to net. Like, you can barely see it on the screen. He is going to net, but... As we see here with the fly view. Let's see. Where did Carpet go? Well, it's back. I don't even know where he went. Carpet went to the middle? Hold on. Let's go back. All right. So here is J Squad. Uh, J Squared. Right here, Botswana gets the tip. See, the thing is, Carpet is really confident in what Low Five does. Pretty much all the time. So you saw uh, earlier, he's trying to move up because, you know, Lofi has the ball. He should make a good play. Uh, but since uh, Osu made a really good hit, Lofi can't do that. So Carpet was actually moving up. He tries to get back now. He actually flips away from the net, though, and goes to the corner. But I don't think uh, like J-Square had any idea that this was happening. Uh, so he tries to rush this, thinking Carpet's in net, and just fails pretty much. Let's go back a little bit more. We'll see if he sees where Carpet's going. See, so he sees Carpet there. He expects him to be kind of near net. Well, right there, he sees that he is going forward. So maybe he should think, hey, Carpet might not be in net yet, but this ball does slowly go around the wall. See, there's a good uh, uh, reason why you use uh, audio cues, because there's no cars really around him. Chad was a little bit close, but he wasn't that close. Uh, and it was just a little bit rushed. That's just trying to figure out your patience. And how well you'll do throughout. But it was a miss. But uh, uh, Osu's keeping this ball in. Both of them actually missed that corner ball. See, this is why it's very 
important. When the ball goes in the corner, you have to meet the ball before it hits the wall. And if you don't, don't go for it. Here, two of them go for it. They both can't meet the ball in time. So now they're just out of the play. Both Chad and Lil Five are out of the play. Uh, Osu just barely can't turn around on that ball in time and doesn't get the hit. So um, instead of meeting the ball at the corner, like if you can't, slow down a little bit. Try and read the bounce and then meet it right after the bounce off the wall uh, is your best bet. It's just hard to do that in a split second timing. When you, when, you Because the safer play is to meet it on the wall because it's harder to, to read those corner bounces. Uh, but it's always a good idea to practice those corner bounces and try to read them. It was a pretty decent pass. This is not a play f if for Crazy Ace, though. So Crazy Ace is coming up. He sees... All right, so right here, if Osu, he's in the middle. He's going to score this goal if there's no uh, contest, which it kind of looks like there might not be a contest except for low five. Um, Carpet still seems like he's a little bit out of the play. Now Carpet comes in, though. This is not a play for Crazy Ace at all. Like, if you have someone else cheating up that far, you have to let him try for the first attempt, and you have to wait for the rebound as that third man on defense. You have to wait for the rebound here. Like, it was a great pass, like a great pass from J-squared. Like, fantastic. It actually makes all three of them go, if Chad goes too. Yeah, like, Chad won as well. If he would have just waited for this play to develop and wait for that pass out to the mid, that's an easy shot. That's a wide-open net for a uh, crazy ace and the reason why that you don't go for it is because you want that juicy rebound plus you already have a teammate there so that should have been a goal from uh, a low five and crew uh but they didn't pull it off see how all three are up low five just can't get the ball down in time and uh let's see let's go to low five's point of view here so he makes the save now it's a race between j squared and him he lands in front of the ball though which is the problem just can't get it fast enough because he lands in front of the ball and good save by J-squared. Nice rotation back into net. Now, these I love. So, there's two people in net. Obviously, you just rotate back. The, the best thing to do is to go right down this middle lane. You get six boost pads, which is um, 72 boost. Like, um, I'll, if you just go straight down that middle lane. He actually got four of them and blew up carpet, which is worth more than any boost. Because carpet's a, a huge dick. But anyway, um, so when you're going back, when you're out of the play, try to go right down the middle. Like, you pick up six boosts. You don't necessarily have to go f for those peanuts or the full boost on the sides. Like, just go right down the middle, and you basically have full boost anyway. Let's go here. Here, he's waiting for the clear. He kind of, like, like, here's a little bit weird to take ball cam off. Right before that ball bounces... You want to keep ball cam on just to see how it's going to bounce around that corner. Sometimes it's weird bounces. He he, he turns it off to grab a mid boost. Mid boosts are pretty easy to line up without going to ball cam. Um, so he takes him out of the play a little bit there. He actually turned a little bit too soon. So he had to re-turn, basically. Like, he had to turn in, turn out, then turn back in again because he didn't have ball cam on. And, like, that's just a play that I wouldn't... Like, just trust yourself to know where mid-boost is, and you might be a little bit better off. He still wins it, throws it to the side, which is probably the best play there. Just, like, he uh, doesn't really have a shot anyway, so you're better off throwing it to the side to open space for your teammates. There's a good clear by Carpet. Can't make the second touch. Like, good just patience there. You might want to challenge this, though. Like, right after that first hit, it's tough. Um, Because, like, it is hitting the wall, so it's hard to read off the wall, so... I don't blame him for waiting, but those are dangerous if Carpet does make that hit. But those are really hard plays anyway for the offense, so sometimes you just got to give it to them, and if they hit it, then they beat you. You know, it's just that simple. Because you might have a harder time trying to read it anyway. So then you'll just take yourself out of the play. Alright. Let's go here off the face. Off. He uh, grabs a boost and just kind of sits with it. That was a good play by J-Square. Dribbling it in, making a 50-50 on the defensive side. Could result in a pass. And it basically did there. Just Osu could not get the finish here. He thought he was going more for a dunk, I think. So that's why he just goes at it as quick as possible instead of going for a shot. Because this is probably Chad's ball. Um, but good play nonetheless. Just keep that ball in. Trying to challenge here. Makes sense. His other two guys are back. so Now he he's rotating back. So the other two should be moving up. Good boost grabs here. Just grabbing those boost pads since there was no peanut. Just wait now for that rebound. Carpet does a good job just throwing it into a corner. This could have been a shot, actually. He could have surprised him here. 
Now, again, it's hard to read. Chad kind of screws up on his uh, dribble, and Carpet's kind of there. Again, Carpet trusting his teammates. He leaves the ball for his teammate, and this could have been a shot if he realized, but split-second timing, he just throws it. Almost gets it on target, and it turns into a pass, though, for J squared, and they get the win. J squared making up for all his wrongdoings this entire game. Let's watch it from J squared's point of view. Just to show a great play from J squared. So J squared reads this perfectly. Perfectly. J squared coming up big at the end after having a little bit of a rough game. Beautiful read there. Low five has to guess at that point. He he has no boost to, or he's not in the right direction to try and make a stop. So he goes f for the guess. J squared puts it high, which is exactly what you want to do, and gets the goal. Good game, J squared. Good game, Oso. Thank you for watching, guys. This has been another replay analysis. Super long one. Final Carpet still sucks up the game. That's what we've learned today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Oso. Later.